hands are the most expressive part of the human body and you're going to be able to express a lot of your personality and how you feel about a lot of different things with this project. You don't have to make your clay hand a version of your own literal hand. You could make a hand portrait, say, of somebody who's much different than you in age or race or some other way of expressing a hand besides making it a portrait of your own literal hand. You need to make your clay piece noticeably bigger than your actual hand. Modeling it over my hand will help in that also because I'm going to be building on the outside of my actual hand. I'm going to start with a slab of clay for my palm and this is a pretty thick slab of clay. It's probably about three quarters of an inch thick. This is maybe a rough shape of my palm and now I'm going to do some more actual shaping of this clay. If it helps, I could draw around my actual palm, kind of divide my palm area in half so that I can make the front half separate from the back half. You don't have to do this with a Sharpie, but it might help, or it might just help you to see how I'm going about doing it so that you don't have to do it on your hand. I can see a couple areas down here in the corner, for example, where I might want to add some more clay to help it meet up with that line. On the inside, you want to make sure the clay is fully compressed. There's some areas up here around the top where I can see some wrinkles. I'm actually going to go around the entire surface here just to make sure that this wall of clay is compressed and that this is a dense, solid, strong clay object. So I'm going to set this piece down to stiffen up. If it helps to keep it rounded, I could set it on a little pillow of crumpled newspaper to help it hold its shape. In general, clay cannot be more than about a half an inch thick because it won't be able to fully dry out. Things have to be completely dry so that they don't blow up in the kiln. So we have to make sure that your pieces are not too thick. Therefore, you're gonna make your hands hollow. While you're molding the slab to the shape of your hand, if there's elements that you know are on part of your hand, it might help me to start to draw in some of those details now. It's just helping me to orient myself to the anatomy that I have going on here. Where this edge is going to match up to the corresponding edge on the other half of my hand, I want to make sure that that edge, which is going to be a slip and score joint, is thick enough that I can make a solid joint right there. I don't want a thin, ripply edge right there. This is going to be a structural joint area for me. So I want to make sure that my edges are solid and strong and compressed. Go all the way around the entire surface on the inside and run over it with your fingers without distorting the shape of the slab itself. You want to run all on this interior surface and compress the clay all the way across the entire inside surface. If you look at your hand in profile, you can see how thick it is. And if you look at it in profile from the thumb side forward, it's really quite thick here. So I'm trying to capture that sense of fullness and thickness in my clay hands also. I use my pencil a lot as a drawing tool on the clay. And then I go back over and I use my finger as a modeling tool as well. And I soften those lines out from the pencil. You also have to make the base for your hand. So that's probably gonna be your wrist. I might go down on the forearm a little bit. You can go down on your forearm as much as you want, but I'm gonna make this base part so that when I attach the front and half of my hand together, I'll have something to attach them onto. 
This is pretty thick. It's at least a half an inch thick. And I'm going to wrap it around. Notice this though, your wrist is not a circle. This shape is an oval. So make this an oval also. I'm going to hold this in my hand and run a finger on the inside. I want this wall of clay to be a tight, compact material. It'll make it stronger. It'll help it hold its shape better. So I'm making this object a stronger structural base for the other parts of my hand to get attached on top of. It's helping me control the shape, but it's also making this a stronger object. I have some cheese hard parts right here. They're still somewhat soft, but they're definitely more firm now than when I first made them. They're what I would call early cheese hard. So I've done some trimming here on the seam to make sure that the front and the back are gonna fit together. And it looks like it doesn't quite fit onto the wrist like how I want. So I'm gonna cut the top part of this and the bottom part of this to fit better before I attach them. As much articulation as I can get in these objects individually now before I attach them together will make things a lot easier. There should be some kind of gesture to your hand, some kind of particular position that you're putting your hand in. So as I am putting the final articulations on my wrist here, I'm paying attention to how this shape of the top of it positions my hand. Okay, I'm gonna join these three parts together using the slip and score technique. Go around with wet fingertips and use a fork and scratch it all up. And each time I'm gonna get the water to sink down into the scratches that I made with my fork and I'm gonna make the scratches with my fork deep and I'm gonna go in multiple different directions. You need to do a very thorough job with the slip and score technique kind of move it back and forth a bit and get those individual teeth of clay to hook in with each other. And while it's open like this on the inside, I'm gonna take advantage of that and run a coil on the inside to reinforce this seam. And I'm gonna blend this in with my finger, pressing against my other hand on the outside of the piece. And I'm not just blending it in cosmetically on the surface with a light touch. I am really pressing. And it's this pressure that is, is I take the clay that was inside that joint that was all loose and chewed up, and now I'm making it tight and firm and strong. So you wanna go over those joints with an extra coil of clay from both the outside and the inside as much and wherever you possibly can. And now I'm gonna put the front part of my hand on. So I need to slip and score these areas too. Go back and forth over it multiple times. So when I match these up, I'm going to kind of shimmy the parts back and forth a bit and try and get the individual teeth from the score marks that I made to hook into each other. I'm definitely going to go around those seams again with a coil of soft clay to reinforce them. And then when I work the clay coil in, it's compressing the clay in that area. You can take something like a pencil and run that back and forth across the seam on the inside. So I might not be able to reach my fingers all the way up in there, but I can get up in there with a pencil and I'm working over the seam. Another good extender tool that I've been using lately is a popsicle stick, and I can use this to extend my reach, and I'm going over the seam, dragging this wood tool across the clay to compress that seam and make it more solid and tight and firm. Think about what else is unique about your hands. 
Maybe you want to embellish your hand with some of your jewelry on it. Maybe you have very special fingernails. That's an important part of your identity. Maybe your hand is holding something. Maybe a butterfly has come down and landed on your hand. Don't get hung up in the details too early. There's still lots of manipulating that I'm gonna do just in the shape of it for a while still. And if you get too tied to putting a detail, say a particular wrinkle in a particular spot, too early in the process, you won't give yourself the freedom of changing the form itself. So stay as loose and open with modeling the clay for as long as you can. I'm gonna use a similar technique of just pinching out a somewhat thick slab of clay and then I'm gonna wrap it around and join it together to make a hollow finger. I'm gonna put a little bit of crumpled newspaper in there. And I'm just gonna softly crumple it and put it inside each finger. It's soft enough that I can just smear it in place. In the kiln firing, that newspaper is just gonna burn out. If I hold up this stick to the tallest part of my palm, right about there, I get this length for the longest part of my palm. And then when I hold this up, say, to my index finger, I can see that it's significantly taller than my index finger. In other words, my index finger is a lot shorter than my palm is. Each one of my fingers is shorter than my palm is. Keep looking at your hand and take measurements off of your actual hand. So just like I did for the front and back part of my palm, I'm gonna spend some time modeling these individual fingers before they're attached onto the hand. So I'm gonna put these marks in the clay now, even though I'm gonna go back over and kind of soften those marks, it's gonna help me orient myself to the anatomy of my finger here. I'm gonna draw a rough outline of where my nail is and draw them in with a pencil and then go back and soften over them with my fingertips. Working on the clay and moving it around. I'm digging in with my nail here a little bit to make more of a line. This nail file tool has also been very helpful for me but mostly the tool that I'm using more than anything else is just my fingertips. So I'm gonna keep working on these fingers for a while. I'm gonna work on the overall size of them, the shape of them, and some of the surface details, and I'm gonna get the fingers pretty much set like how I want before I add them on. So I'm pushing the clay in slightly here on the two sides near the tip. And now I'm gonna put the nail bed in by just going around with my thumbnail. Then I'm gonna go around and refine. The details that you notice about your hands are those things that are gonna be most important for you to capture in your piece. Make it more sculpted, give it more articulation. A finger unlike any other finger that has been sculpted in clay before. Okay. I've also done a lot of checking back and forth of the size of these fingers to the size of the hand in general, the proportions of the piece. And I feel like this is pretty good size relationship right now. I've been trying to capture the individual height of my fingers, the fact that my ring finger is slightly, but not too much bigger than finger number one and number three. My pinky's a lot smaller than my other ones. So I've been trying to capture all that, trying to capture the relative height of my thumb to the finger adjacent to it. Everything is still oversized, but the proportional relationship is correct. I think that the palm area underneath my index finger right here comes up on too much of a slope. 
And when I look at my actual hand, I notice that it comes up and then it comes back down again where my index finger attaches onto my palm. And that's not reflected here. So I'm gonna make that change now and cut this down to better reflect the angle that my finger actually comes off of my palm. I'm opening it up and making it soft and receptive. Then when I do put this in place, I'm gonna use a lot of pressure and maybe a little bit of a back and forth like twisting motion to get the score marks fully engaged and networked and to become one with these score marks over here. And I'm working on the inside. I'm gonna go around in there and I'm certainly gonna put extra clay all around on the outside and work it into that joint to fill in the gap a little bit. And now this pressure going around is compressing and firming and strengthening the joint on the interior and the exterior as much as you can. This is gonna help prevent the chance that your fingers would crack and fall off. And nobody wants that. The clay is a perfect stiffness of malleability right now. It is in the early to mid cheese hard state. It's stiff enough that it's holding its shape. It definitely has some firmness to it. And that firmness means that I can touch it without smearing it. It means that it can hold these fingers up in the air and they're holding their shape but it's also soft enough that I can still do some manipulation of it. I can change the position of these. I could make this whole part of the back of the hand go in more as I feel like that might be necessary to reflect the actual curve on the back part of my hand. I can push this and bend it in and if I feel like it's a little too stiff to do everything I want right there. I can just target, soften it up with a little bit of water in place with wet fingertips. I've been using my nail file as a tool a lot and I kind of want to use it to actually <laughs> file the clay nails down. To compress the webbing area in between the two fingers, I'm gonna get in there with a pencil and work it back and forth. And maybe before I close off access right here to get underneath and compress that, I'm just gonna get in there and make sure that I've worked the inside of this joint next to the one that I'm gonna close off as much as I can and make sure that I don't inadvertently trap an air bubble inside this finger. I wanna make sure that that hole remains open. Your clay hands are not going to be 100% realistic. Realize this, you are not making an actual hand. You are making a piece of ceramic sculpture, okay? So within that gives you a world of freedom and opportunities for creative expression. Yes, in order to have your hand read in a certain way, you need to have a degree of realism in it, but you're not actually making a real hand. You're making an artwork. So that gives you a lot of freedom away from having to make it 100% realistic. It gives you freedom to be more expressive with your marks and your details. I wanna add something to my hand besides just the hand itself. Even though I feel like I have a lot of expressive personality in the gesture of it and in the details of it, I'm gonna spend a few more hours putting more details on it, working on refining the proportions of this hand, and then I'm gonna put something else with my hand to make it even more unique. And I think I'm gonna use some of the same pencil mark making technique on the inside of this leaf that I did 
to define my knuckles. So like this was the actual veins that would go on the inside of a leaf, I'm making some marks and now I'm gonna come and soften those also. So I think I want this leaf to have the same kind of open quality that the palm side of my hand does. And I will slip and score and attach that on place. I'm also thinking compositionally how this leaf element becomes a line that carries our eye from the front of the piece on to the back of the piece. So I think that'll really help in appreciating this piece in full three dimensions. One important thing I want to show you guys is a preventative measure just in case we inadvertently trapped air inside these fingers. I remember when I attached them that I tried to be really careful to leave an open air flowing through passageway in between the finger and the palm so that air as it expands can fully flow out of the piece. But I'm concerned that I might have inadvertently closed up some of those fingers and if there's air bubble trapped in here the piece will explode and we absolutely don't want that so while the clay is still cheese hard i'm going to go and poke a few holes in the fingers and i'm going to try and do it in a way so that it doesn't show i don't want it to be obvious here i'm just using a paper clip you could Literally just use a safety pin or a thumbtack or something very small. But I'm gonna go into a spot on each finger. I think in here I can slide a hole into that wrinkle of the knuckle and it's not gonna really show. In here, I'm gonna go into this wrinkle. I'm gonna put some more holes under the nails here. I'm going to try and soften and disguise that hole so it's not so obvious. But if you can put a couple of pinholes in the tip of each finger, it can go a long way towards making absolutely sure that your piece won't blow up in the kiln. You need to go on the bottom of your piece and very clearly put your initials and ID number on the bottom. You need to be very clear with this so there's no mistaking whose piece is whose. When you submit pictures of your hand, I'm gonna ask to see three pictures of it, at least one from the front, one from the back, and one as a partial side view or a view at an angle. Okay. Spend as much time as you like with this project. I think it would be really easy to maybe sit down and work on your hand for several hours while you're watching a movie or some shows at night and really bring out as much detail and distinction as you can with this project. It's really fun to model the clay and do this push and pull and mark making and softening it to make your pieces very unique on the surface. Bye for now.